You always talk about how fragile life is. Every day you wake up, you're blessed, you're lucky. But it is fragile. It, it kind of makes you reassess and think how much you should appreciate the opportunities you have, because none of us do. You always look at it that you want to play for somebody and whoever it is, son, daughter, father, wife, or husband, it'd do you good to tell them you love them and you appreciate them. And it would do you a lot of good than any people closest to you that you, you say that. You say it, and you say it, and you say it. Because one morning you wake up and everything's one way. And by nine o'clock that night, everything's another way. Sometimes you gotta make and learn and grow from positive things and negative things. If I can go back in time, I go back to 2008 and I talk with my dad about life. My relationship with my dad was really close. When I was younger, he was like one of my best friends because I spent most of the time with him. A lot of workouts, a lot of listening to music, actually. He really got me into music. My favorite memory with my dad was after every workout, we used to drive past the 7-Eleven and we used to get the same chips and a Slurpee every time after we did a workout, which probably wasn't good for us, but it was probably my favorite thing that I remember. I kind of moved around a lot, but my, my family lives in Chicago. That's where I'd say I'm from at the moment, but you know, I was born in Washington. Did a lot of basketball stuff for the most part, just because it was a part of our lives. My husband, Lorenzo, Malik's dad, was a college assistant basketball coach for about 15 years. And when he left college basketball, he opened his own business called First Step Basketball. And that's what he did full time, seven days a week, was train kids. And Malik and his sister were always in the gym with him. I would say that stuck with me the most is the hard work that we put in. Um, we are always kind of like every day, like every day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We were always in the gym, always watching basketball. Just the hard work that, that and the passion that he had for the game is something that's definitely like stuck with me. Malik was always the tag along. And so spending time together and just having that male bonding with your dad, that was an everyday deal um, until my husband got sick. I didn't really realize something was off until my mom said something about it. I saw a side of my dad that I'd never seen before, like anger. And I, that's when I mostly started to realize like something wasn't right. But before that, I was kind of just oblivious to it. Malik was about nine years old when the symptoms appeared for my husband. And they began fairly quickly. And so it hit us like a rock. <laughs> Um, somebody who was very healthy, very active, in the gym all the time, running his own corporation, was all of a sudden thinking differently. It took me about a week to figure out that something was seriously wrong. It really just blindsided us. I've been in a starting goalie role my whole life until I came here. The hardest thing for me just was young in my career here was coping with not being able to play. My options were either Michigan State who had come on to me a little bit later or a lot of smaller schools out east who kind of maybe would have given me a better opportunity to step in and play right away down the road. But I don't think I would have had the same experience. All right, and to get us started, uh, Spence, what do you got for us today? All right, boys. Oh, the player! It's my honor to announce the starters for us tonight. This is a big game for us. We got a lot to prove. So, starting up front for us. I can't even put into words how much this place means to me. So, um, it's going to be a very uh, humbling day come graduation. So that's uh, that's for sure.
growing up, um, I've been a Spartan my whole life. Uh, my mom and dad both uh, went to school here, graduated here, and so it was. There was always Michigan State memorabilia around the house. I was always getting. Um, sweatshirts for Christmas, t-shirts, taking me to football games, basketball games, hockey games. We'd go to the GLI every year that I can remember. Um, so it was awesome. I guess I've always bled green my whole life. My parents gave me every opportunity to do what I wanted to do, whether it was playing t-ball, I played soccer and lacrosse, but I just kind of fell in love with hockey. Just. I guess being able to watch it on TV, I grew up with the, the Red Wings and their glory days, so my dad would always have them on TV and I just wanted to be like them. I think the big thing for me is I've always thought with a big, with a big picture in mind. I was mature enough at an early age to realize that if you can make it to play at the Division I level, like you're in the 1% of players that, that grow up playing the game and that doesn't even it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to play professionally. I was at peace with that early enough, so my whole goal, I guess, was to play at the Division One level and was to prepare myself with a degree to, to move forward in life. If some freak accident were to happen, then that I'd be prepared. The hardest thing for me was being able to set aside my ego and, and kind of do for the better of the team. And I've been, I've been pleased with myself and how I've been able to handle it. And I know the team has had success. So that's the biggest thing for me. You're preparing for a day that may never come. And that's a, boy, is that a mental challenge. And I think he's a, you know, he should be um, a good example for the rest of the guys in the team. You know, whether they're getting, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes a game, um, they need to prepare like he has. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's been really impressive for us. You know, again, that's, that's the kind of thing and that's the kind of atmosphere and attitude that, that we want to have. And it's a tough job. You know, you're the third goalie. He understands that. You have to be an unbelievable team guy to be in that position. And, and you have to be a very, very hard worker. And, and he's both of those. And like I said, I think, um, He's endeared himself to the team because I think they see, you know, just how selfless he is. What I do does have an effect on this team and how I handle what I am doing can affect my teammates and help us win games. Yeah. Lorenzo was diagnosed with early onset of dementia. And his life has never been the same. Um, he can't remember what year we got married or when he graduated from college or when he worked or where he worked. So he definitely has the memory issues. He calls me all the time to ask me what channel college basketball is on. We talk on a daily basis to tell me what channel it is and who's playing. Um, he has not driven a car since 2010. Um, and unfortunately, he hasn't lived in our home since 2010 either. He'll remember like big main details, like where he went to school and like what he did and his mother. He remembers me like completely like, he knows I'm his son, he knows I'm his baby boy. So he, he got mad, but he got better bit by playing again, so. He's always better than all the players I had on workout, so he, he did good. Probably my mom does a really great job of, you know, just filling him in on little stuff. I think they fly to Southern Illinois tonight. It's kind of like taking care of like, like if she were to take care of her mother and like stuff like that, which kind of sucks because like that's your husband and you have to do things that that somebody should be helping you with and you, you're doing it all by yourself. He lives about 20 minutes from our home in a supportive living community where there is staff to help him navigate the day to day. The good thing is we get to see him on a regular basis. He's been to a number of games. As 
caregivers, we learn it's not the person, it's the disease. And so very early I had to teach my kids, it's not your dad, it's the disease. So that they understood when he said something that could be embarrassing, that it wasn't him, that it was the disease and it was completely out of their control. I probably immersed Malik in basketball even more to make sure that he was busy. He wouldn't see his dad and he wouldn't talk to his dad and his dad couldn't have, for a while, couldn't have coherent conversations with him. He's just not capable of parenting in the way that a parent interacts with a child on a daily basis. He can't give advice, but I'll tell you, he can give love and both of our kids know that my husband, my husband loves them. He loves to talk to Malik. How you doing, Malik? How's school? How's basketball? He's so proud of Malik. Growing up as a young man with no man in the household, there's like certain things that you have to figure out yourself. You know, trying to find out where I fit in as you're growing up. I honestly think my mom did a really great job of like helping me through that process and like showing me how a man should act that even through failure, we have persisted. There's so much to be lost when a family member has a disabling illness. I had to change my career. We lost our homes. I had to close Lorenzo's business. None of that has anything to do with love. That's just our worldly belongings and paths. My end goal was, how do I love my husband in sickness and in health and make my kids my number one priority? Malik has been resilient through a lot of change that was out of his control. When you lose a parent in this manner, there's a lot of unsaid feelings when it comes to a young boy. There's a lot of times where you don't know what he's thinking and feeling, and yet he has just persisted and really dug down into, I think, his faith in God. I think surrounding himself with godly men. I think the world of the staff at Sunrise in helping Malik navigate high school, he had a lot of strong male positive figures that helped him through. And I, I really think that was a part of God's plan that because they knew Lorenzo couldn't do it. And by showing us love and reverence, they poured teaching and mentoring into Malik. Hall open again. And again, he knocks down a jumper. Hall a jump shot. And another one goes down. 15 points off the bench, all coming in the second half. There's so much that, that I still have to learn and I can't learn because he's not around and they just don't have that man. My mom, you know, she she did she made a great deal of sacrifices and I say like for the most part she's really showed me like what love is all about. It's to stick with someone for 10 years of them being sick and it just shows me unconditional love. My little why would be like just love and I got that from my parents and it like shows through me through my relationships and I wanted to show through how I play and how I go about my schoolwork and everything that I do. If it's something we dreamed of together when I was younger, you know, playing on TV and playing for a, a big, nice college. It's definitely something I, I use because, you know, the college is no joke. You definitely get tired and like that kind of just spurs the thought process for me of like memories that I have with my dad or like with my friends. Like, you know, you've been working to get to this moment, so I just stop now. I call basketball Lorenzo's love language because it is truly one of the things that has stuck with him through all his um, through all his changes. You know. Did you get slurpees? Yeah, slurpees from 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> through everything that's happened, he still re retains his like basketball memories. So like he retained all his IQ of the game and everything and like I can still talk to him about like pick and rolls and all different types of things and like it'll just click and it's like the old him is still there talking to me.
Well, I'd say the experience has taught me just the value of everyone that you know. The passion and commitment it takes in everything that you do, it's just something because of him that I know if he was here, he still would have helped me grow in that aspect. I think he, for the most part, he would just say he's proud. There was definitely a lot of, a lot of stuff that went into me getting here, and he's definitely one of those main factors, you know. The best coach I ever had, best trainer I ever had, you know. I just, I think he'd say he's proud and, you know, just give me a hug. After taking a bunch of different courses, the finance ones were kind of the most interesting to me. I want to go into advising or management someday. I knew finance at Broad was one of the best programs in the country, and I want to be on a, in a team environment one day at, at the professional uh, work level, and um, there's a bunch of things that you can do in the financial corporate world that you can kind of see your impact on your clients. What I've experienced in my very little professional um, career, just through an internship and through some interviewing processes, is that if you want your firm to have success, you have to be able to be willing to, you know, chip a little bit off your own block for the good of, of a firm. And I think hockey players especially are really comfortable with that. I think about the what ifs a lot. When I was playing in New Jersey, I had been in communications with a handful of other schools, and occasionally I'll look back at those emails and kind of ask myself, like, what if? So it's been tough, I've had some tough nights, but when I think about my life and where I want to be at five, 10 years from now, I don't think there's any other place that could have prepared me for where I wanted to be than Michigan State. So all things taken into perspective for my life, I don't have any regrets. Michigan State just provides you with so much from academic and from like a social and networking standpoint that some of those other schools that I could have gone to wouldn't have given me. I think if I would have went, went out east and played at a school out east, I might have been a little bit lost after my four years were up but where I'm at now, I'm 100% comfortable and ready for the next chapter. I kind of came in as a boy and I'm gonna be leaving now with so much uh, just life experience in general. So it's, I'm gonna be a Spartan for life and that's kind of what I'll always uh, hang my hat on.